We're joined tonight, Kate Conway, by the legend that is Anastasia. Vinny. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Hi, Anastasia. Hello, Kate. Am I correct? Your show is like tea time? Yeah, well, we're on at tea time. Um, so I would consider that, as far as I'm concerned, that would be happy hour slash drive time in America. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I may have a different beverage, but we're up for having a good time because we're off work. Absolutely. Well, we're we're, we're all up for that. Again, it's good to get talking to you. Where in the world are you? I am actually, I know it's it's very shishi. I'm in Switzerland, yeah. um, enjoying the blue skies. Um, but I'll be heading to Denmark this weekend for a festival. You, you, you get around. You've been flying around jet setting. Oh, well, hey. Oh. Hey, don't you dare say I get around. <laughs> it is the truth, though. I mean, I'm not mad. At, in my 50s, I can get around. Woo woo. Um, I certainly do. I still love working. And I'm very glad people like to hear me sing and see me uh, up on the stage. Oh, we're so excited to talk to you today. Actually, whenever I saw your name as being someone that we were going to speak to, I did a double take. I was like, hang on, the honest her? Are we going to get to speak to her? It's funny. They call me the, both names. You mean Anastasia Anastasia? Yes. <laughs> With the question mark when they're talking about, <laughs> you know, me to someone. I'm like, yep. And she's still alive. Uh, she still works. You know, being 25 years or so in the business, I'm glad I'm being at least talked about slightly seen i'm grateful for that and you're still in our hearts from the 90s so strongly like you no know, all my fashion has come back to slap me in the face <laughs> how do you feel about that what i realize is that in the moment of my fashion discovery as a youngster i thought i was way amazing glamorous and fabulous and want to create my own version of leather and this and my crop top and and now i'm seeing you know these pieces of outfits that people are wearing um with everything cut out and i'm like oh dear lord (laughs) i was completely with the big shoes and everything and now i do find it interesting um but everyone's wearing colored glasses now which i'm just i do feel quite ahead of the time on that one <laughs> i tell you for for me it was you and bono and every, you know, everyone's jumped in the bandwagon like very, in very good company that's very nice uh, so we're, we're talking about your tour that's coming to belfast next year and you're you're yes. you're out and about your travel in the world now do you still get the same buzz from that after a, a few years let's say i do and i i really think especially after the pandemic I think everyone, uh, if you maybe have to be unplugged from life to realize that you don't have a zest for being happy to get back on stage, being grateful that it wasn't taken away completely because someone like me that really does love to work and actually works quite often, whenever I would get removed from the stage, it was mainly because I was ill. So, you know, it was not so much fun to not be able to work but so grateful to be back at work so grateful to feel as though i'm hitting that peak of well we want to see her before she dies (laughs) i know it's a crazy thing to say it's very awful morbid but there is that like (gasps) you know it's quite cute like there's a whole different uh relevance of the youngsters seeing me now and this is a very special tour because you didn't get to tour your first album. I didn't. My first or second album. They just promoted me like they just continued making albums until around my third album, heading into my collections edition, where I started touring uh, arenas. And now I'm mainly loving going in smaller venues. It's more intimate because I've done, in the summer I did stadiums with a German um, artist and I just feel like there is a bigness to it and it's lovely don't get me wrong but it's just that little intimacy of being able to have a one-on-one conversation with someone in the audience (laughs) well you'll be in the the Ulster Hall that's the 23rd of April next year Anastasia stay there we're going to pause and play one of your biggest hits this is of course I'm Out of Love 
You're listening to Vinny and Kate here on Radio Ulster. That is I'm Out of Love by Anastasia, who joins us on the programme tonight from Switzerland. You're very welcome. Have you been in Belfast before? In Northern Ireland before? I want to say yes, I've been in Belfast. However, I don't think the last time I was there it was Belfast. It, but I think the last time I was in Ireland was 2016. It was a minute. So we're going on a decade almost, and thank the Lord I didn't wait that long, but I'm very glad to come back because, you know, those are my people. I'm a Hurley Kearns. Hurley's from Cork. My mother was Hurley's. My grandfather was Hurley. My grandmother was Kearns. It went back there. My mom's completely English-Irish because I am 50% that, 100 in my in my ancestry, I finally got ancestry because my mom was a little bit like, sure what your dad was. He just had <laughs> great calves and ankles. You know, he's more Danish, more in the European. Well, Cork's as far away from Belfast as you can get and stay on the island. Ah. But but you know what? My surname is is similar to your, your ancestry surname there. So I'm going to say that we're pretty much related, Anastasia. That's, we're related. It's just how it works. Oh, my God. I you might as well be it. my sister. I can, I can tell by your name, Vinster. <laughs> well, it's true. The Harles are related to everybody. Um, and yes. you maybe have a Randallstown connection. You're confusing Anastasia from, now yes. with these small towns. And, yes. and my mom officially has sang, sung in Ireland on stage Oh Danny Boy. So I think we're pretty settled in the culture. Let's go back to when you did start off and you know everything went so well for you. What were you expecting? Like those early days of the music industry for you because I think as listeners, we have this perception that it's this glamorous world where money is thrown at you and every day is fantastic. But what was it really like? Well, the first part of that is very true, but I didn't know that it was my money being thrown at me that I had to get back. So oh. that was definitely a, a buzzkill. But it was a whirlwind and it was all at once. However, that wasn't what I ever dreamed of. Like I was the most unsignable you know, there weren't a bunch of Anastasias that I could go, uh, I look up to her and I could be her. I assumed that I had to sound like Celine or Mariah or a Stevie Nicks or just anyone that was female that was amazing, blondie. But I didn't have that technique. So I was just hoping I had some kind of a good gift to get a career, but it was just it seemed like it wasn't in the cards. And at the very last, I want to say that, that very last moment where you turn 30, the deal came through, you know? And that was a shocker because I thought that that was just not, it wasn't supposed to happen. I wasn't quite prepared for the fame. I was just a regular girl from Chicago and being thrown into the industry and having people do your hair and makeup. I had no idea how ugly I was until the glam <laughs> squad came on for it. And I was like, holy mackerel, I need some help. What had you been doing to, to try? Had, were you someone who had been at theatre school or someone who had singing in bars before the, the deal? Uh, both of those I was part of where my mom put me in a couple of years of high school to a performing arts school. She wanted me to be in musical theatre, like, and I would try to go to auditions and I just thought they were horrible. Try to do music and then definitely singing in bars, making $50 a night. You have a very unique voice as well. Like, at what point do you realize that, that you are different in a good way from a lot of the other artists that are out there at that time and now? Probably when the bidding war happened and I got on the TV show on MTV that that I sang my song, Not That Kind, and the industry was, we need to sign her immediately. And I was just kind of like, what is happening right now? What, is, like, I've been shopping this single for five years. Like, what, what happened? And I think that was when I started to get the recognition from people who could actually make a difference, like a record company. Well, what kept you going? You said it was five years of pushing that song. Well, I, I think I continued to fall in a rut where I'm like, I don't want to do this. And then maybe another producer would be like, no, 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 don't give up. Let's work on this. It would be another hope and another hope. 
I was collecting an unemployment check and I really did have in my 29th year on the earth said, girl, like you don't have a vocation. You really need to get yourself in check. Like you need to find what you're going to do for your life. You can't just keep wishing that this wannabe fantasy dream. My spirit always wanted to help and make a difference. My brother's disabled. So there was a calling of me wanting to either be a social worker. I just hoped that maybe I could work in some field like that. So Anastasia will be in the Ulster Hall again. The album is finally getting the tour it deserved. And that's the 23rd of April next year. Tickets are available now. Uh, Anastasia, good luck with it. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kat and Vinny. And uh, tea time was uh, totally delicious. (laughs)